Hi, I'm Tim Williams, lead litigation attorney here at the firm. In this video segment, I'd like to explain to you what it means to have whiplash. Now, for the most part, whiplash simply means a sprain or a strain of the neck muscles. Uh, but it's important to visualize just how that occurs because the neck, frankly, is a complicated uh, series of joints and uh, can easily be injured, to be honest with you. So looking at the, uh, the model here, we have a spine. Uh, that's the full, the full spine, that's head to neck. So your head would be up here and then this is your tailbone all the way down here. Uh, this is simply the, the front view of the spine. You can see we can turn it over to the side. We can look at the back. Uh, but for all intents and purposes here, let's focus on the front. Now we'll zoom in. So now, now we're just focusing on the neck itself because that's primarily the uh, area that you, you suffer injury from a whiplash. Sometimes it goes down in, into the, the thoracic or the mid-back, but ge generally speaking, it's the neck. And you can see the neck, um, the levels, there's, there's several levels, there's seven in fact, and the cervical spine. So there's seven, seven different levels or layers of bone. And we can add in there, so you can see there's nerves extending out and away at each level, okay? And those are innervating, for example, your shoulders, your arms, your ribs, so on and so forth as you work your way down. And then we have discs inside as well. So we have the, the nerves and the discs. We can um, rotate this around. You can see it in the, from the side view. We have the nerves again, we have the discs in between, and then we have a series of joints here. Those are called facet joints. And those are important to, here too, and I'm, I'm gonna show you why in a, in a second in the animation. But uh, the facet joints essentially keep the spine, or keep the neck from hyperextending and damaging the spinal cord. Uh, the problem there though, is that uh, there's a lot of pressure placed in the facet joints if a sudden impact, for example, uh, is, is experienced by, by the person or the individual. After that, we then have uh, some connective tissue. This is uh, uh, this is all, uh, uh, they're called ligaments. So it's connecting bone to bone. So you can see the ligaments across the facet joints, the ligaments uh, along the spinal processes in the back, and then finally we have the deep muscles of the spine, and then we have uh, the, the the less deep muscles of the spine, and uh, and then finally the uh, the uh, more surface area muscles of the spine. So there's. Again, many layers of muscles, there's many layers of connective tissue within the spine itself. So bearing all that in mind, what happens when, for example, <clears throat> a person's standing at a red light and someone hits them from behind at high speed? Um, the doctors may say, well, you experience whiplash, but what does that really mean and what does it look like? So let's look at the video here. And I think it's a pretty good, this is about the best illustration I've seen uh, after 15 year, plus years of doing this in terms of what whiplash really is and how it occurs. So again, we have the spine, we have the, uh, pause it there, we have the spine, and you saw it built in, uh, the, uh, the discs themselves, you can count them, I mean, we don't really count them, you can see them uh, from the low back all the way up into the neck. So between each verte vertebral body or layer of bone, there is those discs. So we have an individual here, uh, he's gonna be seated in his car, uh, now we've added skin, so you know, now he's clearly uh, recognizable. And what happens if this individual is hit from behind? Okay, so that's, for the most part, that's what, you, that's, that's what happens. Uh, and, and I'm gonna break this down in a, a bit more detail here in a second, but you're sitting at, you're sitting at your car or in your car, someone hits you from behind. Initially, because inertia being what it is, your car is gonna move forward as a result of that impact, but your body's gonna wanna stay where it is due to the laws of inertia. So if you imagine you're hit from behind, your body wants to stay, but your car is moving out from underneath you. So suddenly your body's going backwards relative to your car, but you have the seat behind you. It's gonna catch up and flip you forwards. So that's, that's what we call whiplash, that, that sort of whipping back and then forth motion is what we saw there. So again, looking at, this is gonna be a slow motion, but looking at uh, the way this occurs, that arrow indicates that the, 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 the vehicle itself is being pushed forward because it's being rear-ended, as well as the person's lower, uh, well, at least from the shoulders down, that area of the body is because the seat is back there supporting it. So the seat's pushing the lower area of the body back, but the head's unsupported in this case, and this is what we're gonna see. So you can see it, it, it begins um, pushing forward, and then you get this sort of curvature, which is creating all sorts of pressure points up and down the spine, along the discs, as well as the connective tissue and the muscles. And then the person then is flung forward, and when you're flung forward, it's then putting pressure points and, and pulling the opposite uh, uh, portions that it just experienced when it was being pressed backwards. So 
Uh, when it's being pressed backwards, it's kind of pinching the back side of the neck. When it's being pressed forward, it's pinching the, the front side of the neck and pulling the back side apart. So it's a sudden pressure and then pulling. Uh, that, that's the motion that, that, that causes the injury in a whiplash case. Generally speaking, you can have disc damage from whiplash. Uh, in addition to that, you can have uh, what's, what's more commonly seen are the muscles. Uh, the muscles themselves are, are uh, strained. Um, the ligaments and tendons are sprained. And uh, sometimes you have frank tearing. Sometimes you can have, uh, uh, honestly, you can have uh, fractures of, the, of the, what, what are called pedicles. Um, you can have fractures of the vertebral bodies. There's all sorts of injuries that can occur from a whiplash case. Generally speaking, however, when a doctor uses the term whiplash, they're talking about the sprains and strains, not so much the underlying discs injuries, if there are any, or any underlying fractures. If you've been injured and need help, Dwyer Williams Turcos Attorneys will get you the settlement you deserve. Experience gets results.